to say that joining me is Republican Congressman Andy Barr of Kentucky. He is a member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Congressman, welcome back to Bloomberg. Thank you so much for being with me. I would love to get your reaction to the news, the confirmation we have gotten from the administration today that they have, in fact, paused the shipment of these large bombs to Israel over concern of how they may be used in Rafah, the high civilian death toll potentially uh, that could could result from them. Is that appropriate in your mind? It's, it's a direct abrogation of their responsibility under the Constitution to take care that the laws are faithfully executed. Congress, on a bipartisan, bicameral basis, directed the administration to provide this military assistance to Israel to defend itself against terrorists. And uh, the administration does not have the legal authority to just ignore and disregard the will of the American people through their elected representatives in Congress. We passed the assistance package. We did not authorize the administration to pause these shipments. And this is an affront to the relationship between our two countries. Uh, the fact that this administration is rejecting um, a, a, an act of Congress and turning its back on our key ally in the Middle East is obnoxious. Uh, and um, Congress will certainly be asking searching questions about, number one, the lack of authority for the administration to do this, and number two, why on earth this administration would put domestic politics ahead of our own national security and the security of our allies. Well, Congressman, the counter argument would perhaps be that this isn't even so much about what's happening domestically as the idea that in Rafa there are more than a million Palestinian civilians who are taking refuge and they want to make sure that the civilian death toll does not go higher. Is there nothing Israel could do, no level at which that death toll could rise to that would alter your view of how the U.S. should be approaching Israeli policy? Well, th this argument is based on the, the faulty presumption that it is somehow the Israeli Defense Force's fault. Uh, Hamas terrorists use innocent men, women, and children, Palestinian, innocent Palestinians as human shields. The problem is not the Israeli Defense Forces. The problem are is the cancer of Hamas terrorists mm -hmm. embedded in Rafah. That is the problem. We need to give Israel the time and space to do what needs to be done done to prevent October 7th from ever happening again and to rid Gaza of radical Islamic terrorists. Until Israel is able to de-radicalize and demilitarize Gaza, we will continue to see this kind of outrageous terrorist activity perpetrated against our key allies. Well, Congressman, it's great to have you weigh in on this matter as a member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. You also are a member of the House Financial Services Committee. In fact, you would like to be the next chair of that committee. And I want to ask you on an issue relevant uh, to your role there. We got a third-party independent report yesterday about a toxic workplace culture at the FDIC. We have had a lot of calls for the chair of the FDIC, Marty Grunberg, to resign. Would that really, though? solve these deep-rooted problems in your mind? Well, the report found that um, Chairman Gruenberg would be particularly challenged to fix these problems. And I certainly agree. That's why I called for Chairman Gruenberg's resignation, which is, which is overdue here. And really, the question you have to ask yourself is, if this toxic work, work, uh, uh, workplace, if this culture of harassment and misconduct, if that existed in a regulatory, regulated financial institution, uh, an, an insured depository institution that the FDIC oversaw, do you think for one minute the regulators, the bank examiners would say that we should keep management in place? The answer is, of course, not. Um, and so we need to hold the FDIC to the same standards that they would hold their regulated banks uh, uh, to. And in this case, it's very clear that the only way to start to clean up the mess at the FDIC is to uh, hold uh, the leadership to, a, to account, and that means uh, that Chairman Gruenberg should go. Uh, the other point here is that um, it's, it's more than just a toxic work environment. Uh, it is actually threatening um, the safety and soundness of our financial system because we know that the FDIC, because of these problems, has had a employee retention problem. Bank examiners have left. Uh, there is a, a, a shortage of uh, talented and capable uh, and, uh, and, and well-trained uh, bank examiners at the FDIC. This is directly attributable to the toxic workplace. 
and you know the you know this is this is this is a threat to uh, safety and soundness of the banking system. So I think uh, this is a this is a damning report, and we we have to see some accountability. Uh, in other banking related uh, matters, sir, there was talk that this FAA reauthorization bill that technically needs to be done uh, by Congress this week might have some things attached to it, including safe banking for marijuana companies, potentially even stablecoin legislation. It seems less likely now that those things will ultimately get passed through this vehicle. Do you see another vehicle with which they could in this Congress? I do. I think another must-pass piece of legislation that could be a vehicle would be uh, the National Defense Authorization Act at the end of the year. Maybe it might be politically more achievable in a lame duck after the election to do this. But um, as a supporter of both the stablecoin legislation uh, that we marked up and the market structure bill for digital assets, I think this is very important. I think it's connected to national security. When you think about stablecoins, um, the United States uh, needs to uh, promote dollar-denominated stablecoins in the global economy to protect and, and, and advance the dollar's dominance, and the dollar is the world's reserve currency. Blockchain is coming. Um, digital assets are coming. Stable coins are coming. We need to make sure that we provide regulatory certainty and clarity for investors uh, in crypto uh, and in digital assets to make sure that uh, stable coins which are coming to reduce friction, to increase the speed with which transactions occur, uh, to, uh, to, to um, uh, find you know innovation in our financial system, we need to make sure that those stable coins are denominated in dollars. That's why this is impor so important, and it is connected to national security. So I, I'm hopeful that if we can't move it as a standalone before the end of this Congress, that we can attach uh, some version of this uh, to the National Defense Authorization Act. Congressman, finally, I literally have 30 seconds left with you, but I can't let you go without asking. As you understand it, is Marjorie Taylor Greene's motion to vacate the speaker effort dead at this point? Certainly on pause and, and mercifully so. Um, the last thing that any conservative, self-described conservative should do six months uh, ahead of a very consequential presidential election is mm -hmm. to vacate the Speaker's office. That would be uh, so counterproductive and, and, and certainly not good for the country. All right. Congressman Andy Barr, the Republican from Kentucky, thank you so much for joining me live today from Capitol Hill on Bloomberg Television and Radio.